welcome to this last video in which we are going to be combining all these concepts and i'm going to do it end to end so i'm going to show you guys how the actual project management really works and we collaboration together and how all these different um, team collaborators or team members are going to be working on this project together so we'll be looking at version control and collaboration so if, if we look at the project now we just have the main branch and this main branch is the branch which is the single source of truth and it's the branch which actually reflects the current state of our complete project it's the branch which is actually pushed to production and have and our code which is deployed is actually this main branch but since as we don't want to be tampering with this main branch which can break our code the lead developer goes ahead and creates a branch called the dev branch so we are going to create a branch called the dev branch I'm going to create branch which I'm going to call the dev branch from the main branch Okay, so we now have this code on GitHub and we have our dev and main branches to work from. With the dev branch being the branch um, developers are going to be actually actively working with. So if I switch to our project, um, our project board where we have the different tasks, different tasks are assigned to different users and those users have to accomplish those tasks and move those tasks through this, um, through this chain till the tasks are done. So let's see, for example, I'm going to add an item here for a particular user. Let me just add an item. Um, let's just see, create, create um, add function. Create add two numbers function. Okay, so this is actually the task I've, I've assigned to this particular user to create an add two numbers function. So I'm going to convert it to an issue as we saw in the previous video. Um, this one I'm going to call it for this job time project. Um, I'm going to go into the task and into the issue and assign it to a particular user. So let me just assign it to, to myself. Assign this issue to this user and that's it. So I've assigned this issue to this user. This the user is assigned the, the issue, the to do issue. I'm going to assign another issue to another user, which is still going to be here in the in the to-do um, section of things. So I'm going to assign, let's just say, um, which, which function can I say? Multiply two numbers, no problem. I'm just going to say create, create, multiply, apply two numbers, function, so I'm going to create this function. So this is actually the next task for the next user he has to work on. So don't bother about this specific task. They can, the task can be anything generally. It can be a task is working on the front end project and he has to be creating an HTML page or maybe on the back end, he has to fix a bug. So anything you put in here is, is just a task the user has to work on and it can be anything. So just create that task, assign to the user. You need to assign a particular user to the task. So first of all, you need to convert it to an issue as we saw in the previous case. So you convert it into an issue, specify the project for the issue, click on it, you assign it to another user. So in this case, I'm going to assign it to, let me just assign it to form in spectacular. And yeah, we have the task. So what you do is you are going to move it to in progress to indicate to others that you are working on this task. Then you go to your computer and code the particular future you are working on. So what happens is, as we saw, this um, developer has to work on this add two numbers function. It's the future he has to work on. To work on it, he needs to first of all have this code locally. So he has to ensure he has this code on his computer. To get this code, he has to clone this repository which was created by the lead developer. So this, this repository is on GitHub and is remote. So have it on his computer system, he has to clone it. So he comes here to code. Um, he goes to he has this link which he has to use as the clone link. You copy the link, you come to your terminal on the com on your computer, and you have to run this command to, to clone it. So when you open your terminal or your um, command prompt on Windows, you are going to run the command git clone and you put in the name of the repository. That's so that you can clone this project and you have a copy of the project on your computer system. So I just cloned this project now. 
and if I come if I come back here, you see we have team team project. So I just cloned this project from GitHub and now I have the project on my computer system. I'm going to go ahead and, and open this project with VS Code. So I'm going to right click and open with VS Code with your favorite text editor. So I now have this project opened in my favorite text editor and I was assigned a task to work on. So I just got the code from GitHub by doing a Git clone to get the project locally on my computer system. And I now need to work on this um, future which I've been assigned to work on. I have this document here which I created. Um, this version control and collaboration with Git and GitHub document that explains what project um, collaboration entails with version control. So I just explained that this document is for developers who want to work and collaborate on a team with others. And there are some Git command equivalences which I explained here. The Git checkout command and the Git switch command are equivalent. These commands help you switch from one branch to another. And as we saw here, I just showed you guys two common branches, two initial branches which are common branches, the main and the branch, these are branches and they are initial branches which are really common branches which are always created for a project. So you also have the git checkout dash b command and the git switch um, c command. These two commands are also equivalent and they help you create new branches locally. So the, the creation I did initially was a remote create, so I came and created a branch here, but most of the times you are going to be creating branches locally on your system. And you are going to be using these two commands to do that, to create the command, to create a branch on your system. Branches are created for new futures um, developers are working on. And we are going to see that because, um, for example, what we are doing is create act two numbers function. This is actually a new future which this guy has to work on. And so he has to create a new branch to work on this future. Very important. For every new future, you create a branch to work on that future. Meaning you'll be using these commands to create a, to create a branch. And I already explained what um, the main and the dev branch are. I talked of the fact that the main branch is the branch which is the single source of truth and is the branch that does not have to be tampered with. Only the lead developer modifies this branch by merging changes in the dev branch. And the dev branch is the branch for which all the other team collaborators or members are going to be merging their changes into. So all developers and team members uh, merge their changes from their different future branches into the dev branch. Then only the, the developer merges changes from that dev branch to the main branch. That's to ensure that things are consistent and we have um, funny developers going in and spoiling things in the main branch. Okay. With that out of the way, um, we are now into um, ensuring that we have the dev branch locally. Because as we said, it's the dev branch into which we are going to be merging changes by other developers. So we have to ensure we have this dev branch visible locally. And to check whether you have the dev branch visible locally after you have the project. So we really got went ahead and cloned the project and we have it locally on our system. Now we can check if we have the dev branch so that we can go in and and start working. So you do a git branch to check, to look at the branches you have locally. First then we have only the main branch, so that the dev branch. And we know that we don't need to tamper with the main branch. So what we need to do is we need to have this um, dev branch locally. We have to ensure we have it locally. So what do I see here? I see here that to get the, lo the, the branch locally, if it's not present, you need to obtain it from the remote using one of the following commands. Either you use the git switch dev followed by git pull origin dev or you do a git fetch origin dev followed by this. So any of these two commands is valid and it's going to have make you get the, the dev branch locally. Present you have only the main branch locally. Okay, so let's go ahead and just use the first command since I've said any of them is going to work. So git switch dev, I'm going to run the command here, control v git switch dev. I want the command. So I've switched to the dev branch and that's what it tells us there. Followed by git pull origin dev. So I'm going to get that command. Run it as well. Pull origin dev. Take some time. And now we have um, everything up to date. And we have our dev branch locally. So we can still go ahead again and verify just to confirm that we have that branch. 
by warning has received can go ahead now and verify by see what new git branch just to ensure we have the dev branch locally git um branch and now we see we have both the main and dev branch and we are good to go now we can continue working on on the future we were assigned to work on okay so working on new futures is actually the next big thing you want to work on a new future so you need to branch off the dev branch so you need to create a new future from the dev branch and that's what you are going to be doing for all futures you are working on working on the new future you get you start from the dev branch which is this the the, the source of truth for dev developers you branch off that branch by doing a git switch dev so if you look at this presently we are on the dev branch because the star is on this dev branch and we need to create now a new future branch okay if we do a git switch just to ensure that we are on the dev branch as we indicate here switch the dev branch by running git switch dev we are already on the dev branch but running this command is not going to do anything again because we are already on the dev branch so we are we are sure we are on the dev branch now Given that we're on the dev branch, we have to ensure you have the latest changes from the remote branch by running on the remote dev branch by doing a git pull origin dev. So you run this command to ensure that you pull all the changes from the origin from the remote branch. So I'm going to just do that to ensure we have all changes from the remote branch. Git pull origin dev. And we are sure we have all the changes because we have done no change so far. So git pull origin dev is just so that we confirm that we have all the changes from the remote branch. Okay, so you see it tells us that everything is already up to date. That's that's good. Then the next thing we need to do now is to create a new future branch with a descriptive name. So we need to create a new future branch with a descriptive name. Given that we want to work on this future, and that's what's interesting because you see that the project management here with these other tabs tell us show the different futures want to work on a new future create two numbers function create add two numbers function so we're just going to create a new branch for that future which which is going to have that name that descriptive name so we are going to copy this git switch and create that branch git switch that c um future branch name we're just going to call it add two numbers add two numbers no problem Since we get an error, um, the 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 the, the angle brackets are here are not valid, so I have to take them away. Add two numbers. Okay, so I've switched to that branch and I've created the add two numbers branch. If we run um git git branch to to look at our branches, you know you now notice that we are on the add two branch add two numbers branch and we already have the branch created. Okay, that's good to, to see. So the next thing we need to do now is to work now on the future. Work on, on your future in this branch and commit your changes using these commands. So now we need to work on the future. We have created the branch, but we need now to write um, we need to write the code that is going to add two numbers. That's actually working now on the future we have to work on. Yeah, so we need to work on this future before we commit our code. So let's go ahead and work on our future. We are in the add two numbers branch. We are in the add two numbers branch, so we can go ahead and work on that future that adds two numbers. Okay, if we go to our source index.ts, what do we see? We just have a console log. So um, I can go ahead and create a file, um, or I can just create the function here and call that function. Let me just go ahead and create that function. I'll comment this line. I'll comment this line. I'll work on the add two numbers function. So const add two numbers and it's going to take a which is a number b which is a number number and we're going to return a plus b okay so i've now created the add two numbers function and i can call it and print the results so result in seconds result is going to be equal to i'm going to call add two numbers and pass in two and four and i can print the result console.log um result 
Okay. So I now have that functionality programmed. No need to run the code. I know it's good. It's correct. But I will go ahead and run the program. But yeah, so we have the functionality program. We can save it. And the next steps as our document shows us is that we need to do a git add followed by git commit and put in the message name. So we are going to go ahead and do this git add to save our changes, to add our changes. Git add. Git add. And after git add, we are going to do a git commit and the commit message name. We can just give the name as add two numbers, the commit name. Um, so git commit, git commit the message, add two numbers. Okay. So now we have that um, program. We have um, our functionality program, and we have done the git add. We have added it, and we have, we have given it a commit message name. I just mentioned here that. You should know that while you are working on this future, other developers can be working on their own futures on their own branches. And that's generally what collaboration on a project is all about. So what you need to do is you need to switch back to the dev branch because a user may have worked on his branch, done some changes and committed to the dev branch and merged these changes to the dev branch. So you need to first of all switch to the dev branch and get those changes that the other developer had worked on before you come and merge now your own changes again. So I'm going to go ahead, just run the command following the different steps here. Switch back to the dev branch with git switch dev. Git switch dev. So I switch back to the dev branch. The next thing is ensure you have now the latest changes from the remote dev branch by running a git pool origin dev. Run this command git pool origin dev. So you're going to pull the changes from the remote dev just to ensure that if a Another developer merged to the dev branch. You have those changes. So I pull the changes from the dev branch. And the next thing says switch back to the future branch we are working on. And do it by running this command git switch the future branch name. So if you remember, we're working on the actual numbers future branch. And if you have forgotten the branch we are working on, you can just simply type a git branch to know that branch. And you see here it was at two numbers. Presently, we are on the dev branch because we switched back, if you remember, to the dev branch so that we could pull and know the changes that are coming from the remote. But now we are going to be switching back to the at two numbers branch using git switch, then the name of the branch. So we are going to be doing git switch at two numbers. At two numbers. Okay, we want this. We have switched back to the add two numbers branch and if you notice the code here even changed because initially it was not it didn't have this code it was having only the console log and that's interesting working with git you see that things are actually really interesting and we have now to merge the changes from your branch with the dev branch using one of the following so we now need to merge our changes remember we had changes in the dev branch and now we need to merge changes using one of the following I would generally advise to use the git merge um, dev command. So you can see go with the VB, it's, it's no problem, but that's mostly when you know what you are doing, but no big deal, you can go with anyone. So I'm going to go with the git merge um, dev command. So that will merge changes now from the dev branch into this are uh, actual numbers branch. So the two changes, that in the dev and that on the future branch I just worked on now are going to be merged together. So I'm going to do a git merge dev hit enter so we have things with the update and things are fine and then the next thing after that is i also mentioned here the comment note that you may encounter merge conflicts and you need to collaborate with others to know the changes they made so that you can resolve the merge conflicts um very well and generally most of the times you encounter an error when trying to do this merge just um communicate with your with your lead developer get on a call with him and you guys can resolve those merge conflicts. That's a, a completely new topic, but your lead developer for sure should now to resolve merge conflicts. And the next thing is, you now need to push your changes to, to, the, to the origin, which is actually on GitHub. So you need to run this command to push um, the changes to GitHub so that the other developers can also do that. So if you know a git, git push origin and the name of the branch, so in this case, since as we're working on add two numbers as our branch, we are going to do git push origin add two numbers. 
and it's now going to push all this code and the future we're working on to GitHub and the other developers can get it and merge also. And that's going to be great. Git push origin at two numbers around the command. And we have teams pushed and we have a, a new branch at two numbers created on GitHub. So if we switch now back to our GitHub. Notice here that we have dev and min, but if I refresh now, we are going to have at two numbers also on remove. Look at this. So we now have at two numbers, which is going to contain um, the latest code which um, the developer just worked on. So he worked on this future at two numbers, meaning that to get things together, you need to merge these at two numbers into dev so that the other developers can pull from there and have the, the changes that this developer worked on. So after he has that push to GitHub, he has to pull, he has to create a pull request and merge into the dev and merge his dev branch, or merge his future into the dev branch, which is the remote git repository. So, so with his new future branch now pushed to the remote repository, it should be visible. So that's what we saw. The future branch he created was visible on GitHub. So he has to merge his changes into the he has to merge his changes into the dev branch. So he has to click on this compare and pull request. The main thing he has to ensure is that the branch which is on this left is actually the dev branch because he does not want to be merging into the main branch. As we said, only the lead developers merge into the main branch. So other developers merge into the dev branch. There are future branches they have worked on. So he just worked on this at two numbers future branch. He's going to be merging it into the dev branch. So he has to validate it, create pull request. Create two pull request. At this level, other developers can come in and verify the code before he merges it. He can look at the different files which he changed. The different file changes he, he, he worked on. As we see here, it shows that he added these lines and he commented this line, so he subtracted this line. So he can look at the file changes if he likes, then he can just go ahead and merge the pull request. So he's going to go ahead and confirm the merge and merge the pull request. So after he has merged the pull request, what happens after merging the pull request is that the code which is the, the dev, which is actually the, the dev branch, so the dev branch now is going to be up to date with changes. The dev branch now is going to be up to date with changes he worked on in his at two numbers branch. Because as we saw, we merged at two numbers into dev. So dev now has the changes he worked on in his at two numbers branch. That's really interesting. So this developer has worked on his future create at two numbers function. He worked on this future following the steps I just outlined. You can go back and rewatch the video to understand all the steps in detail. Then he can move now this um, task to done. Yeah, so he moves the task to done. Developers know he has moved it to done. Many other developers can have tasks here in progress and all of them working on this task simultaneously, just following all those steps and things are going to work fine. So the other developer wants to work on this future multiply two numbers function. Let's see, both of them could be here working on them at the same time and it's going to cause no issues provided they follow those steps. As well as a developer who have finished one, normally one developer is going to finish his task before the other. And so um, the other developer working on the multiply two numbers function is going to still be working on his task. So let's consider now that we are on the other developer who to work on these two um, multiply two numbers function. So what happens is he's going to follow the same steps. So first thing is that he's going to ensure that he already has the code locally on his computer. If he does not have the code, he's going to need to do the git clone command. If you remember, I did a certain git clone. clone. If you remember, I came to the terminal. Um, that's the terminal here. If you remember, I did this git clone to get the project locally so that I could have this project on my computer. That's to be done by all the developers who don't yet have the code on their computer system. They are going to need to do a git clone to get this project on their system. And when they have the project now on their system, they can continue following the other steps outlined in this document. That's after they have gotten the, the, the project on their system by running by running git clone. After doing a git clone, they can go ahead and follow this documentation to have um, to continue working on new futures. Because the idea with this documentation is you want to work on a new future 
and you want everything to be synchronized without errors so while collaborating on this project with others. So you have to follow this documentation to accomplish that. With an understanding of these commands, the command to change to switch between one branch and the next, and the command to create a new branch, and an understanding of what the mean and the dev branches are. As I explained, the main branch is what is the central source of truth. You don't temper with it, you work only with the dev branch. And you check as well if you have the dev branch locally. So um, that developer is going to need to check if he has the dev branch locally. If we assume that um, the developer, that developer already had the dev branch locally, which is in this case, but let's go ahead and consider that we are, we are working as a completely new developer. We can decide that, we can just consider that um, the same developer, let's just, let's just consider it's the same developer who is working on the future. Let's consider that it's the same developer working on the future. So given that it's the same developer, if we assume it's the same developer, then he already has the code on his system. He already has, um, he already has the dev branch locally on his system as well because he followed these steps already. He already has the dev branch locally on his system. So the next thing now is actually this other step, which is working on a new future. So we assume that is the same developer. So I'm going to go ahead because I don't want to go ahead and repeat all those steps, getting the code locally, um, ensuring that I have the dev branch locally then before going ahead and following all the steps. So I'm just going to go ahead here and, and I'm going to switch, um, I'm, going to, I'm, going, I'm going to consider that it's the same developer working on the on the future. Okay, so I, I consider now that it's this the same developer and this guy. So it's the same guy working on the future. So now he has to work on this um, multiply two numbers function. He has to work on this multiply two numbers function. But the cycle continues. The cycle continues, as you see here, the cycle continues because he's going to be working on other futures. And given that he's working on other futures, he has to repeat the cycle over and over as he works on new futures. So to work on a new future, he has to come again and go ahead, switch to the dev branch as we see. He wants to work on this future, um, create multiply two numbers function. So he has to go ahead, come back, switch to the dev branch, git switch, git switch dev which is actually this first command git switch dev the next command git pull origin dev we copy it bring it here git pull origin dev so that he pulls the changes that were merged into the dev branch so we see that he pulled all those changes merged into the dev branch git pull origin dev the next command is git switch and the future branch so he's going to mention the new future branch he wants to work on this is the new future. The previous case was add two numbers. Now it's multiply two numbers. I'm going to go ahead, come in here, and change this now. It's switching to a new branch. Multiply two numbers. So he has gone ahead, created a branch. Multiply two numbers branch has been created, and he has now to work on the future and do a commit following the steps. So it's time now to work on the future. Yeah, so let's go ahead and work on this new future, multiply two numbers. I'm going to go ahead again and create a function, a new function, multiply two numbers, and just call met again. Hmm. Multiply two numbers. Number again, E, number, number in return a times b then i can call it here again result so i pass two numbers you can see pass two and four then i can print both result and result two result two Okay, so I have those two functionalities programmed at a multiply. So what happens now is he has finished working on that future. He has to go ahead and follow the steps now again. He needs to do a git add. So basically, as I said, all these steps are iterative, and you just need to once you have done it once, you are going to you are going to know how to um, to continue. Just repeat 
the same thing you have done in the past and basically commit now dash md commit message multiply multiply two numbers message the next thing yeah as we said you know that other developers will be working on their own features while he merges so he has to switch back to the dev branch again so that he can get the changes that the other developers have merged into the dev branch while he was working on his own future branch so he switches to the dev branch so that he can pull the changes other developers have merged into the dev branch while he was working switches he pulls the changes um, the other developers had worked on while he was working on the future branch then he switches back again to his dev branch so that he can now merge things again switches now back to his um to his multiply two numbers branch seems i spelled the branch wrongly key branch so that i can see the name of the branch is multiply two numbers I can copy it and run the command once more okay i switch the multiply two numbers branch back i need to merge it i need to merge now this multiply two numbers branch into my local dev branch it merge dev I've merged it up to date so notice here that you may encounter a merge conflict and you need to get on a call with your lead dev to fix it if there's a problem if not everything works well you are good to go you need to do a git push again so that um, the other developers can now have your code git push origin supply two numbers git push origin multiply two numbers spelling this on multiply okay i didn't spell instead although i said spelled it only the first time two numbers okay i push the branch um to the remote git github okay the next thing as we see here after you push the branch you need to do the pull request pull requests are merging into the dev on the remote github repository so with your new future branch push um it should be visible so this add multiply two numbers now should be visible on on github if i come here and refresh i should now see multiply two numbers as well visible here in addition to add two numbers okay take a look now we have we we'll still have multiply two numbers so it means that as developers continuously work on futures and create new branches you are going to have um, their branch names appearing here you can go ahead and delete these branches when you are done working on them but for now let's just leave them and continue so i have multiply two numbers now visible continue what's the next step talking of fit the pull request by clicking on the visible button okay i'll go ahead fit the pull request by clicking on this button and what do they say as i said you could click here or you could go to pull request and click it's the same thing either clicking here or doing the click here it's basically the same thing yeah so you can click here to create the pull request and you just need to verify as we see here you, are, you just need to ensure that it's your future branch is being merged into the dev branch so you just need to ensure that okay here you notice it's a big problem it's not your future branch the future branch you just worked on was multiply two numbers and it should be merged into the dev branch so just remember that the future you just worked in on you choose it here and your dev branch will be on this side then you can now confirm your pull request after confirming that you can freely go ahead and look at the files that have changed one file changed in this case and you see it tells us that it shows us the different lines which were changed and that corresponds to what we just did presently so you can look at the files that have changed and if you are good with that you can confirm the merge and pull request so you merge and pull confirm here to confirm and when you confirm we are we are done with this confirmation the future you just worked on which was multiply two numbers is now merged into our dev branch again once more so our dev branch is up to date with 
with the changes that um, the other developer worked on. And as we see here, you may encounter an error while merging, but if you encounter an error anytime while merging, you just need to consult your lead developer or other developers on the team and solve that. And the cycle continues, meaning that the project, the cycle continues, meaning that given that you are done with this um, task, you can move it now to done. A new task should, will be assigned to you as time goes on. You move it to in progress. You come to your code editor. You follow all the steps again back from the start, meaning you switch to the dev branch. You do a pull request on the dev. You create a new future branch for the future you'll be working on. You work on that future. When you are done with the future, you do a git app, you do a git commit. After that, you do a git switch dev, git pull, git switch back to your branch. You do a git merge, merge with your dev branch. If there's a conflict while you're merging, you consult the lead dev. You guys resolve it. After resolving it, you do a git push. You do a git push to push to GitHub. After you push to GitHub, you need now to merge things now into the dev branch. So you need to click on that button. Your branch is going to be visible on GitHub after you have done the this initial this thing command. Your branch is going to be visible. So with your branch visible, you can click on the button. You ensure that you're merging that branch into the dev branch. You confirm the pull request. You confirm the pull request after a colleague has probably reviewed your code as I said. You can look at the files that have changed and after things have been confirmed, you click and confirm the pull request, the merge. If there is a merge conflict, you consult your, your lead dev, you guys resolve it and things are good to go. The cycle continues and continues and that's just basically um, how you collaborate on a project with with team members after the project has been initialized you have a project management which is also created so that team members can have visibility into the task they continuously do version control and collaboration by following all the steps outlined in this file okay so guys that's it i think i've, I've really put much into these videos to ensure that you guys can work on projects with team members easily and I would like I would like your support guys just go ahead and click those, that subscribe button like this video ad as well and you are going to be getting more um, enriching videos like this in the future